Now that you are familiar with attribute tables, let's talk a bit more about the types of attributes you might find. When you create an attribute table or add a new field to an existing table, you need to tell the GIS what type of data you will be putting in that field. So let's explore what your options are. First off is text attributes. These are also called string, which is really important. These are generally nominal data. You can't add or subtract or multiply text attributes. On the right here is a screenshot of a table about pets. The name of the pets are strings. In the data set, all of the buildings on campus, for instance, the Knight Library or the EMU, the names of the buildings would be text attributes. You can use text attributes to describe ordinal data as well, but the GIS wouldn't recognize the order beyond alphabetical since it's just viewing these types of attributes as text. Next up are numeric attributes. These are where the value of in the field will be a number. We have two main types of numeric type numeric attributes, integers and floating points. You might remember integers from a math class in your past. These are whole numbers, no fractions or decimals. For instance, number of people in a county has to be a whole number. You can't have half of a person. In the case of my example on this slide, we have a number of the number of checkups for these pets. Floating points numeric values are numbers with fractions or decimals. These are also called double or numeric in some GIS software. ArcGIS, for instance, calls these double. Boolean attributes tells us whether a statement about the entity is true or false. In the example on the right, this veterinarian is keeping track of whether these pets are overweight. She has decided whether, according to her definition of overweight, whether each dog is over or not overweight. She puts a one if the pet is overweight and a zero if it isn't. The vet now has an easy way to look through her data set and find all of the overweight pets and, for instance, send them a coupon for weight control pet food. Technically, these are nominal data, but I also might consider these ordinal since you might order true values as higher than false values. Most GISs don't actually have a Boolean attribute type. So usually we either use integers where one is true and zero is false. But you can also have a text field where you use true or false or TNF. The integer data type is a better way to store this type of data. In a GIS, you might be able to imagine lots of different uses for Boolean attributes. If you work for the city of Eugene, for instance, you might have a building data set where you have a field for all commercial buildings and a, an attribute about whether they're up to code on fire prevention. Do they have all of the smoke detectors, alarms, extinguishers, et cetera, to be up to code? So up to code, one, not up to code, zero. Date and time attributes are those which show dates and times, pretty simple. Here we have the last checkup date, for instance, for these pets. In a GIS, it is common to have a date and time field for when the point, line, or polygon was added to the data set, or when that thing became in existence. If we, might, if we think back to our building data set in the city of Eugene, we might add buildings when they're built and remove them from the data, data set when they're torn down. Then we can go back and query our data set and find all of the buildings that were added to our data set in 2020. There are lots of ways this is stored in your GIS, but most GISs with graphical user interfaces GUIs make it really easy to add dates and times to the data set without having to understand the complexity of how it's stored. Interestingly, dates and times are interval data, but not ratio. If you think about it, what is the zero point in dates and times? Times are only ratio if they're stored in a 24-hour style. 
finally, we have geometry attributes. These are, will be the same for every entity within a single attribute table. It might seem obvious that all of these shapes in, the data in this data set are polygons, for instance, when you're looking at the map, not just the attribute table. But remember that spatial is special, and this is actually a pretty unusual thing to have in a database. So we need to store it. Here's an example data set where I've noted the different types of attributes that we have here. You can tell that these are all polygons. We have text attributes such as the name or alternate name. We have the date in which they came into existence. We have numeric attributes such as uh, the shape area or the shape length. And we have a Boolean attribute which is whether these counties in Oregon contain the capital.